Senator Jeff Hayden, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate that. We'll talk about the fact that you just recently won the Senate seat in just a moment, but first let's talk about the fact that you were in the House for three years. What skills did you hone in that body that you believe will serve you well over here in the Senate? Well, I think uh, my debating skills, you know, we debate in the House pretty fiercely over there, uh, as well as probably the process, uh, going through the committee process, figuring out how to get your bills, you know, originated, how to get them in the hopper, how to get them through the, the process, how to get your colleagues on board. Uh, I I don't find that. I think that's transferable skills right to the Senate. Um, I think the decorum, you know, uh, though the Senate has uh, some slightly different rules and the way they address um, um, whoever's presiding, but it's, you know, it's pretty similar and, and uh, I won't have all of the butterflies that I would have had when I was a freshman uh, uh, House member. And you did win the seat that was held by longtime Senator Linda Berglund. Big shoes to fill. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Senator Berglund was, uh, as Larry Pogamiller called it, Senator Pogamiller, the lioness of the legislature. And so those are really big shoes to fill. But with her blessing and watching Senator uh, Berglund, not only as a legislator, but as a citizen, um, I think that we have like values. I think the things that she cared about are the very things that I care about. And so I won't pretend to have the institutional knowledge and understand every all the ins and outs of, say, the Health and Human Service um, uh, bill. But I have served on Health and Human Service for the past three years, and so I have some familiarity with it. And in fact, as you mentioned, she does um, have a lot of expertise in the healthcare arena, and it's a priority of yours as well. What are some of the projects, the legislation that you would like to try to move forward? Yeah, you know, I was the House uh, chief offer of the Minnesota Health Plan, which is a single payer bill. Um, and so I plan to help Senator Marty, which this is really kind of his legacy bill. So I plan to help him with that. I think that that's very important. Um, I've also had to place a special emphasis on out of home placement. You know, we have a, a lot of children that either through the juvenile justice, uh, or juvenile corrections, but better yet, child welfare, people go into foster care and making sure that those kids either get back in the home, find good families, or find a a suitable place so that they can move on with their life. So I've convened a child welfare group or a child well-being group, which looks at those issues. And um, disproportionately, those kids are kids of color. So looking at kind of those issues, how do we really look at our children and get them moving on if they were part of an unfortunate circumstance? Now, in the House, you are also on the State Government Finance Committee and the Bonding Committee. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what you learned there that you plan to take coming into this session. It is a bonding year. Yeah, it is a bonding year. Unfortunately, last year we didn't meet a lot, but I was able to kind of, you know, look at the projects, learn about infrastructure throughout the state, um, figure out how do we keep our infrastructure up and create jobs at the same time. And I think that that's primarily what the bonding bill does. Um, and then in state government finance, there are very, a lot of controversial issues. Uh, you know, the issues about the state workforce and what's the right size. The issue about voter ID uh, was heard last year and obviously vetoed by the governor, but it's rumored to come back and maybe in the form of a constitutional amendment. That's something that I'll be watching closely. I think it's the, um, it's, it's, the, it's tantamount to a poll tax, in my opinion. Um, and I know that sometimes that's controversial for folks, but that's how I feel about it. I think we have a great, great, great election system here, and I don't think we should change it. Um, I think that those are the kind of things that we'll be watching. There's also the Sunset Committee, um, and we are, are looking at each and every department within the state to figure out their viability and use. Uh, and one of the first groups up is the Councils of Color, uh, which I was attached to as a freshman. And so I want to make sure that when we look at these departments, and I think we should, but we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You also have a background in the nonprofit world. What did you learn there that you're taking into your life as a legislator? You know, I think in the nonprofit world, and I worked really for the most vulnerable folks, I uh, crisscrossed the state trying to help people uh, find places to live, taking uh, our veterans and others that are falling on hard times and allow them to have some dignity and have a place to live and get their life started again. And so I think that that ideal of learning the state, understanding that these issues aren't just in South Minneapolis, that they're all throughout the state, and at the same time, really, really, really kind of thinking about who do we represent. And sometimes it is those hardcore activists and advocates that show up at the polls and are watching, but there are a lot of kind of unnamed, unseen folks that we represent that sometimes don't even show up to the polls, but I think it's awfully important that we think about them. Senator, I want to ask you real quickly about the issue of redistricting and specifically the maps, the plan is to be heard in January in the court system. Give me your impression 
of the maps as they stand now. Do you think they need refining? Are you? Yeah, I do think that they need refining, and frankly, I think that they need more inclusion. They need more inclusion of communities of interest, communities of color. Um, I think that they need to have a much more bipartisan feel. Um, when we argued that in the House, um, there was a representative champion in particular, really went down a litany of uh, organizations that have been historic that have been involved in this, uh, organizations like the NAACP and the Urban League and the Urban Indian Community and others that really should have a say in this. And I think that those um, those organizations, along with a whole bunch of others, really had really didn't get a say during our process. And so I think it's unfortunate that we're going to kind of allow the court to do that. I think Minnesotans expect for us to get our job done, and I don't think we have. Chair of the redistricting committee in the House, Representative Sarah Anderson, said that she has started to reach out to a lot of DFL folks in the House. You're no longer in that body. But if she were to reach out for you, to you, what advice would you give her on the refining of these maps to well, make you it know, something the governor might approve? Yeah, I, I got a letter uh, from Representative Anderson about two weeks ago. I would have rather gotten a, a letter from Representative Anderson about a year ago. Um, and I'm not saying that to be provocative, but I think that often we have to start in the front end. We have to plan and we have to get, bring everybody together. And so throughout that process, we didn't really get that interaction from w w with Representative Anderson. And now that we're coming up against the deadline, I think to kind of send a letter and say, hey, call me and let me know what you want to do, um, it, 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 it might be a tad bit too late. Um, my advice to her would be um, to really be serious about that, to kind of come back over to the Capitol, call uh, legislators in, call the communities in, and really sit down and be earnest and figure out and get their input and look at the lines and look at the neighborhoods and really try to draw a map that wouldn't be so partisan. Okay, Senator, one more question about the issues, then we'll talk a bit more about you. Okay. Big ticket, yeah, big items, obviously, coming up this yes. session, uh, the possibility of a special session for a Viking Stadium. We have some constitutional amendments on, on tap. What do you support? What don't you support? What are some of your pets? coming into it? Well, I tell you um, that I think that we need to put Minnesotans back to work, and I think we need to do that with a large bonding bill. Um, but I think we need to do that through public infrastructure projects, uh, refurbishing schools, making sure that they're energy efficient, um, making sure that our bridges are taken care of. I think we got a report not long ago that said that our bridges are woefully uh, insufficient in terms of their, their design and, and their length of time that they uh, should be in service. Um, what I don't support and my district doesn't support is publicly financing of a Viking stadium. As much as I want to put people to work, and I've been supported uh, by labor, and I'm a former um, labor person myself, but I don't think that we should spend um, our public tax dollars, especially in light of all of the issues that we have. You know, we've shorted our schools, um, our infrastructure is eroding. I think we should use those dollars in order to create kind of a public financing process that really everybody can benefit from, not just a couple of people. And that's what I ultimately think that the financing of a Viking stadium would be. And so as much as I uh, want to put people back to work, I think that there's better ways to do so. Okay, Senator, let's talk real quickly about you. We are running out of time, but when I introduced you as Senator Jeff Hayden, yeah. you were, wow. Wow. Is it sink, has it sunk in yet? You know, it doesn't. Sometimes people say Senator, and I kind of look over my shoulder to see who they're talking about, right? Um, but I, I think it is a amazing opportunity, amazing opportunity to represent a very diverse district, but a very strong district. And so I'm ecstatic. I'm happy. I have great friends and partners on the local level. Representative Clark and I have been a team for the past three years. I'm looking forward for the person who's going to take my place in the house to work for them. So I'm just ecstatic about it, but I do sometimes think, wow, what have I gotten myself into? What are your expectations now moving into the next, this legislative session? Well, I really hope that we can work together. You know, I've gotten a lot of calls um, from senators on both sides of the aisle welcoming me, and I, you know, I think that that's fantastic. But I really, really am hoping that we can work together. I'm really hoping that we can kind of tone down the social issues, get Minnesotans back to work. Um, we don't know what the November, the November forecast is going to be, so we might have another budget deficit. People are be pretty much betting that we'll have some level of budget deficit. So I hope that we can get to work, solve the budget, budget deficit, get Minnesotans back to work, and get the state back on the prosperity. You just talked about your expectations. What do you see your role as bringing those expect expectations to fruition? You know, being a real team player, you know, uh, being able to go in and compromise, being able to go uh, to, to sit down at the table and figure out kind of how do we bring that forward. You know, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. I'm pretty happy. Uh, I get along with uh, folks uh, pretty well, but I'm also a fighter. 
Uh, and at the end of the day, we're going to fight. And I believe uh, that it's unconscionable to balance the budget on the backs of the people that are most vulnerable. I think it's unconscionable to go after people's civil liberties. Um, and so I'm going to fight for those things. But at the same time, I think that we can kind of sit down. We're starting to see these groups come together. and We're starting to see bipartisan groups talk about issues. And I want to be a part of that. And I want to be a part of the prosperity of the state. All right, Senator Jeff Hayden, thanks so much for giving us your perspective on your new position. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.